Welcome back artists, I'm Wyatt Paints, and today I've got a demented video for you. After a long seven years of waiting, I finally got shipped the wave two of my Kickstarter for a Kingdom Death Monster, the Gambler's Chest. And you know I couldn't wait to rip open to that box and start building and painting. Of all the models in the box, I chose to start with the Kingdom Death's version of Santa and Krampus rolled into one, Atnas. Now due to the very dark fantasy nature of this game, I've decided to stick with a desaturated watercolor style that would match the artwork in the manual and storybook. Now there's a lot of details to paint on this, so it's going to take a while in this video. You might want to grab a snack before we start. And also, don't be intimidated by how many details there are to paint. We're going to be using the same basic techniques that we've gone over time and time again in our previous videos to get a great result. Now. No more talking. Let's stop wasting that time. I'm going to grab my brushes. Let's get started. I started by doing some sub assembly. This will let me paint each part easily without having to reach into tight spaces and risk getting paint where I don't want it. So whenever I have the opportunity to do this, I take advantage of it. Now to start Atnas, I want to tackle his robe. This is going to be a tradition of Santa scheme of red with white trim. So for the red, I started with a base of scarlet. After two layers, I moved on to the highlight using Bloody Red with a traditional dry brush. The goal here was to add soft highlights. Because this was a fabric without any deep folds, softer highlights would look better here. And for the watercolor look I was going for, I needed to make sure I narrowed the bandwidth of contrast. This means making sure my highlights are not too bright and my shadows are not too dark, except in the most extreme of cases. For the white trim, I chose a trio of grays, uniform, ash, and starship exterior. To do this trim, I had to start painting a bit clean to preserve the work I had already done. Thankfully, this was easily done due to the very pronounced and raised trim. To maintain the narrow contrast band, I again restricted my use from the top and bottom ends of the color, so uniform gray had to stand in as the deepest shade here. This was followed by a fairly heavy dry brush of ash gray. Since I knew I was going to take this one more step above this hue with Starship later, I needed this to cover roughly 50% of the cuffs, so a heavier hand was needed. A key thing to remember when painting different parts in a sub assembly is that you want to make sure that the vibrancy of different parts match. Even though I was using the same colors, applying them more heavily to one part would make them uneven and look off. So I follow a two step plan to help prevent that. Starting with using the first part I paint as a gauge for all the other parts that come after and frequently comparing it to each part as I paint them. Second, if I do get a little bit overzealous painting a part and take it a bit too far, I then go back and repaint the other parts to match that one. So trust me, if you go slow and use these tips, all of your parts should come out fairly even to each other. As a final highlight, Starship was applied. I tried to focus this on the outermost part of the trim and more heavily applied this to the surface furthest away from the base as these areas would catch the most light naturally. Even with that said, the difference was pretty slight as I was still mindful of the overall aesthetic I was going for. Thank you. 
After this, his coat was mostly done, but I didn't want to paint the filigree just yet, so I moved on to his shoes. Each shoe got based in scarlet red. I wanted to keep the colors simplified here as they're so low on the model they would be in fairly deep shadow. So I skipped doing any of the highlights and left them scarlet. This had the added benefit of tying the shoes in with the robe as they shared the same base color, but also not to be an exact match to suggest they were made of different materials. This is an easy way to get a bit of variation on different clothing items worn on a single model giving it a more natural overall look without having to pull out or mix a ton of different variations on a single color. Now, with all my red complete, I can now paint the embroidery and the filigree on the suit and shoes. For those, I chose hammered copper and bright bronze. The copper going on first was an easy choice as it was a pretty red metallic out of the bottle. This lets it sit well next to all the base reds without looking out of place. I thinned this down and painted the coat embroidery and all the details of the shoes. I followed this up with bronze used as a highlight. Using these two metallics layered on top of each other gives the appearance of light catching it at a more reflective angle. So I used this sparingly on the very edges of the trim and on smaller details that I wanted to stand out a little bit more. To add a bit of readability to the smaller bits, I used a sepia wash. As with most washes, when applied thinly, this will settle in the crevices. Using washes like this will let you enhance the model details quickly without overly changing the look of what you painted already. Since I had the metallics out, I gave the same treatment to the ornaments on each of his sleeves, a hammered copper base. Follow with a bronze on the picked out details. Then I added a bit of sepia shade in the deeper creases to finish off the coat and a majority of this model. I think this is a good place to take a quick break and thank my subscribers over on Patreon. This month with your donations, I was able to pick up some replacement paints, without which I wouldn't be able to paint Atnas today. Thank you very much. If you would like to join my painting pantheon, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below. And if you'd like to help contribute to this channel without spending any extra, you'll also find my Amazon affiliate link below. It won't cost you any extra, but the channel will earn a small commission to help keep the lights on. And finally, you can subscribe, like, and leave a comment. The YouTube algorithm loves the engagement, and doing so will not only ensure that you get served my future videos, you will also become a part of the growing community that will make this channel a bigger success than I ever dreamed it could be. Now I'm done with the self plugs, let's get back to painting. Next on the to-do list are the hands and other held items. I'll start with the cane. At first, I thought about making it silver, but I felt keeping a consistent painting scheme would look better overall. So again, I deployed hammered copper and bright bronze, starting with a base coat of copper. For the details, a quick dry brush of bronze highlighted them perfectly. And since I chose to paint the cane first, I didn't have to overly concern myself with painting clean or avoiding the glove as any overpainting will be cleaned up and repaired when I painted it next. This is a good example of using your painting order to your advantage. Speaking of those gloves, I was in a bit of a pickle. I wanted them to read as white while staying true to the narrow contrast band style that I was looking to replicate. Also, the gloves being so close to the white trim, then I didn't want to use the Starship Gray again. Thankfully, I had a light bulb moment and grabbed Frostbite. This is a slightly blue tinted white that threaded the needle for me. It had the added bonus of being a cool hue, so when I used it here against the very warm reds and coppers, it ended up adding a bit of separation and a bit of pop and attention to what he was holding in each hand. One quick coat, followed by a second pass on the raised details, achieved the look I was looking for.
Now in his left hand, Adonis was holding a newborn baby that needs to get painted. So I mixed up a base of Bad Brews and Midland Flesh. I tend to use a fairly purple or red base for flesh tones as I find it adds a nice undertone for the skin that I really haven't found a better alternative to her. I followed this up with pure Midland flesh, thinned down and built up on the larger volumes on the baby while maintaining the deeper shadows. I followed this with a splash of dark flesh tone to give the baby a head of dirty blonde hair. Then to finish it off, I used a heavy wash of Riken flesh. While I do advocate using thin coats of wash as a rule, some rules can be broken if there's a reason to do so. And in this case, I wanted to give the baby a look as if it had been just stolen right after birth, still covered in some kind of shiny thick fluid. That along with the purple shadows gave the baby a very sickly look on the brink of death. Next, I moved on to Atnes's face. After basing and dry brushing the gray trio of colors for his hair, I again used the Bad Bruise and Midland Flesh Mix for his face and lip. I gave him a quick slash of scarlet on his tongue, then I wanted to add some deep discoloration to his cheeks and nose to bring out the very pockmarked skin that he had. So I grabbed some purple wash and dabbed it in. This gave the look like his face was permanently bruised from his manic laughter. After, I toned it down a bit with a few touches of Midland Flesh. Once I was happy with the look, I moved on to his beard of hands. As before, I treated the bottom trim with the same three grays I used for the other parts of the trim. For the hands, first I gave them an overbrush of the Bad Bruise Midland Flesh Mix. Once I got some pigment showing up, I pumped the bricks as I didn't want them to be too saturated, but I felt it still needed a bit more definitions so that the hands were more recognizable as hands, and I got that from adding a quick wash of Reichlin Flesh. As before, I kept this wash nice and light and focused this on the fingers. Once this dried, I came back with a dry brush of Midland Flesh to lighten up those flat areas where the wash had stained it a bit more than I wanted to. Thankfully, this only took a quick few passes and I was happy. Before I went on to other parts, there was one more detail of the coat I needed to paint, which are those two larger leather pouches. The trio of colors I chose here are Hardened Carapace, Leather Brown, and Desert Yellow. Now, surprisingly, the darkest color here had very poor coverage, and it took about three coats to get a fully opaque layer. While I most likely could have stopped after two, I needed to make sure that this layer was solid because those pockets will be a focal point of the lower half of the model. Next, I used leather brown following the contours of the bag to really show off the surface of the sculpt. As this added a level of movement to the piece as the folds and bends of the leather are due to the walking motion of Atnes. Taking the time to do this detail right gives the final model a nice dynamic look. The final step with this, with the desert yellow, is reserved for only the most flexed areas of the leather. It's important to be very reserved here. Pushing the highlight too far will throw off the balance of the model by ignoring the contrast band we're using everywhere else.
Once I was happy with this final highlight, I picked out a few key pieces to add some bright bronze details, such as the buttons and the scroll designs. In the left pocket, there's another baby, just slightly older. For this one, I landed on using Midland Flesh, but I swapped out the bad bruise for a sanguine base. The look of the sculpt suggests that this baby is much more healthier than the one in his hand. As before, I layered on the pure Midland Flesh, but unlike the other baby, I decided to forego the Reichland wash. I almost imagine that this baby was more of a helper as it has a toga, clean hair, and rides shotgun in the front pocket solo. So I wanted to reflect that in a cleaner look. Bit of dark flesh and sepia wash finished off the baby with a head of curly blonde locks. With just three major parts left to paint, I moved on to the bursting bag of babies. Now like the shoes, I wanted the main color of this bag to be red, but a bit of a different shade from the coat to keep the bag from blending in and getting a bit lost. To get that look, I swapped out the scarlet for a sanguine base. Once again, I used an overbrush to get a thin application. Two coats here and it was good to go. I followed this up with highlight layers of scarlet and bloody red, so that overall, the bag will have a deeper tone compared to the coat, but the highlight reds will help keep the cohesiveness of the piece. Moving on to the babies bursting at the seams, since I already had the familiar sanguine base, I jumped straight to the layering of Midland Flesh. Here was another puzzling area for me, as there were quite a few ambiguous areas here that I was unsure how to approach. In the end, I decided that this bag had multiple layers of fabric and that these babies were working their way through them. So I left that negative space between them, the base sanguine color. Now I didn't come to this choice lightly, as on one end of the spectrum, I imagined it a mix of viscera and soft tissue, which I thought would be taking it a bit too far. And on the tamer side, I thought about making it a mass of togas they were tangled up in, but I felt that would make the area a little bit too busy on the eye making these seams hard to pick out what the viewer was looking at. So the red fabric can be seen as a happy medium. With the babies painted, I needed to add some details to the bag, starting with bright bronze for all the braided stitching. Next, I added a bit of liquid silver to the skull designs and a bit of nullin oil to give them some definition. Finally, I wanted a leather reinforced bottom and opening because it makes sense for the utility of this bag. A quick pass of leather brown and sepia wash took care of this in pretty short order. Additionally, bronze accents and rivets finish off the look. For the top cap babies, I went back to the Bad Bruise Midland Flesh Mix, followed by Pure Midland Flesh and a thin Reichland Flesh Wash. Here, I did end up giving them their gray togas as there was enough going on that it worked, and that ticks off the bursting bag of babies off the to-do list. Nah, that's a bit of a tongue twister. Next up is what I'm calling the Evil Spirit Antlers. I wanted them to stand out. So I knew I needed them to be drastically different from the rest of the tones. And since Atnus was very much Christmas themed, I wanted to have a strong green element to this model. And this was a great place to put it. 
The three hues I chose were black green, goblin, and kraken green. While the black green and the kraken seem to diverge from the muted contrast band that we've been sticking to, in actuality, these two will cancel each other out, giving a nice muted look we're looking for, while the goblin green still provides the strong green tone I wanted. After the greens were established, I went in to get the details using skeletal bone for the teeth followed by a sepia shade. Scarlet for the tongues with bloody red highlights. and frostbite for the faces with a purple shade to give each one a bit of definition. Now for the final detail of this twisted Santa, his many tentacles. Now here I had to tread carefully as I wanted them nice and fleshy without looking like a bunch of, uh, well, you know what they look like. <laughs> Even though this game has plenty of mature themes and visuals, I'm trying not to get demonetized before I get monetized. But, you know, it is what it is. I gave them the Bad Bruise Midland Flesh treatment I've used several times so far. I paid extra attention to maintaining the deep purple ends of each of the tentacles as a little inside joke. You know, purple heads? Then I gave each tongue a nice scarlet slash and highlight of bloody red. which leaves me with just final assembly. Oh my God, Atnas is nightmare inducing. Just look at him in all of his baby snatching, tentacle having, demon spewing, manic smiling swagger goodness. I'm both looking forward to and dreading having to face this guy in upcoming games. Just a final reminder, if you liked this video or if you learned a few tips that are going to help you with your future painting projects, let me know by slamming that sub button, that like button, and maybe leave a comment telling me you want to see more Kingdom Death figures and which ones you like to see painted, like the Screaming Antelope or the Gold Smoke Knight. Let me know. I'm all ears. And as always, thank you for watching, stay creative, and always enjoy the process.